Hello, my loves. Welcome or welcome back to Chemistry with Kismet Tarot. I am Monica, the Kismet Chemist. If you are new to the channel, welcome. Welcome to the family. I'm honored to have you here. If you're returning, welcome back. I have missed you. Today's reading is focused on people who are in the role of being a step parent. I myself am a step parent. My kids have a stepfather and stepmother, and it is a journey of learning a new way of parenting, a new way of connecting with children, a new way of stepping into a role that you don't always foresee for yourself. And I have seen, I have seen true healing happen through the roles of step parents, both myself as a stepmother, as well as my husband as a stepfather. And it's something that I find is not talked about enough. The ways in which step parents literally step into the role of parenting and transform the lives of children when they go through something like a divorce or the loss of a parent or have grown up with a single parent and now have a two-parent household and their entire life and view changes. I have great respect for everyone who fulfills this role because it is one that is a chosen role in a huge way because it's not it's not the same as choosing to be parents. It's choosing to be a parent to a child that is not biologically yours, to loving them and to nurturing them in such a beautiful and healing way. We have four piles today. Each one has a card as well as a crystal. Pile one, it's the card, get to know each other. And there is a banded agate if it wants to focus. All right. Pile two, it says act as if your partner is here. And we have an orange calcite. There we go. That's better. Pile three, the card you are limitless. And we have a white blue sodalite. And then pile four and I love you with a raw labradorite. All right. I'm going to give you some time with the cards, get in touch with your intuition, get in touch with your heart, get in touch with your guides, and allow yourself to step into a state of trust for where you are led. And I will see you at your piles. Pile one. If you chose the first card, the get to know each other and this banded agate stone, this is the message for you. And I have to apologize because Willow is in here and she's being a menace this morning. Do you want to come say hi? Come here. Puppies. Okay. 
Give me one moment. I'm going to let her out. She does this every time I start recording. Okay, my loves. I am back. <laughs> my dogs are being holy terrors today. Okay. So this get to know each other card, it says learn to meet another's needs or another's need for love. And it's the card 44, which is such a beautiful thing to be on this card for the message of it, especially with this banded agate, because this banded agate is all about calmness. It's about clarity, emotional balance harmony, peace. There's so much that's coming through with just this stone about what it is that you do for the children that you're taking care of that you don't technically have to. And that's the best part. Step parents in this situation, and especially with this get to know each other card, I myself grew up with a stepfather who did not know me. He didn't try to get to know me. His focus was on my mom. And this is something that caused a lot of wounding for a very long time. And it took me a long time to let go of. And it's almost as though you don't realize when you're in this role, when you take that time out, not just to get to know your significant other, but to get to know your significant other's children, their likes, their dislikes, what makes them happy, what makes them tick, what sets them off emotionally and what calms them down and you nurture those things in a connection you're giving to them something that they didn't have before and even if they get these things from both their parents you guys you could have one of the healthiest co-parenting relationships but if all parents do not take the time to learn who their children are, including those children that they did not biologically parent, you do leave a lasting hole of why and how and what within the child themselves. And this is such a beautiful thing. And I feel very, very strongly with this pile that spirit really wants you to know that these little moments that you do, you know, getting getting a coloring book and coloring crayons and sitting down with a child and coloring with them or hearing about all of the things going on at school, going to school events, things like that. Even just talking about passion and creativity or what new fad they're into, you know, video games clothing, movies, TV, anything like that, when you really spend that time with a child to show them that who they are matters, their personality matters, their emotions matter, it creates a very healthy state of mind that no matter what happens in their life, they always will matter to someone. And you could see it as just like, no, I'm just hanging out with my with my stepson or my stepdaughter or I'm hanging out with my girlfriend's kids or my boyfriend's kids or what have you. You could see it that way, but in the eyes of the child, in the eyes of the divine, what you're doing is you're gifting this child with a sense of wholeness that will carry forth through their entire life. And it's something that becomes second nature the more that you do it. And it's such a beautiful thing. So let's take a look at the overall energy that you really bring to this situation. So we have the card 11 with the queen. I love that because you have these synchronistic repeating numbers, 44, 11. This is literally like you're, you're like an angel to these children. And I do get with the queen card, um, deep divine feminine energy. So this could be a pile where there are a lot of stepmothers. Um, and that's, I gotta be honest with you guys. This is one of those readings where when the, the energy comes through, I'm going to give the, the traditional typing or, or words that I'm getting. And I'm not here to offend anyone. 
in regards to um, gender identities. I am simply going with what I am picking up energetically. With this queen card, I get, like I said before, I get this energy of stepmothers. And like I said in the intro, I myself am a stepmother. And this get to know each other card is something that I'm very familiar with because my stepson, my stepson and I actually had a lot of conflict for several years and I had to sit him down. Like I was very, um, passive. I, I wasn't even passive aggressive. I was just passive. I was just like, okay, I'll step back. Okay. I'll step back. I didn't want to rock the boat, but it got to a point where it felt like there was this illusion that, that I could be removed from the equation. And that was something that I felt strongly was coming from my stepson. So I sat him down one day and I said, okay, here you go, dude. Like, I need you to be aware. Like you're stuck with me. I love you. I'm here for you. But I'm not going anywhere. So we've got to work this out. And ever since then, the way that our relationship has dramatically changed has really restructured our entire family dynamic. And when when my husband sat down with my kids and essentially had the exact same conversation with them because of the, the tension and the conflict, it was like taking a shovel and the hole that we all felt like we were in, it was like shoveling in a layer of dirt so that we could all take one step up and move our way out of that hole finally. There's never a replacement for actual parents, but sometimes actual parents don't know how to fulfill their role. And when you step into this role, and especially in this sense of, of really being in your power and knowing your power and knowing your worth the way this queen card is, you step into this role of showing the children that as you get to know them, you also nurture them in such a beautifully divine way. So let's take a look at these two animal spirit cards. Oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. We have dolphin and we have wolf. Wow, okay. So with the dolphin and the wolf, these are so oppositional energies, but they're both again, divine feminine energies because we've got water and earth. Uh, the wolf energy is that that leader, that example, but it's the leader and example that does not expect everyone to be exactly the same. It knows that each person within the family unit or each person within the the pack holds their own uniqueness, their own individuality, and it's they're okay with standing firm in who they are. And setting that tone. Now, when you look at the dolphin and the dolphins, you talk about pod mind where everybody is attuned to the other, the other party and they work together and they flow together. And it's not pod mind in the sense of like mind control or anything like that. Nothing negative. It's literally like they're so attuned to each other that they know what the other person needs. And that brings such joy and balance and healing. So there's such a beautiful emotional grounding here that you're giving to the children or the child that you are step parenting and co-parenting. And it's a great, beautiful thing. With this dolphin energy, I also get the sense that you, you harness this energy of let's, let's get creative. Let's get inventive. Let's have some fun. And you do it because you know, whether it's because you've been through the situation or because it's something that you just are intuitively led to do for this child or these children, you know the heaviness that comes with this situation. And so you're doing everything that you're meant to do. And if you're here looking for that answer, please, please take that to heart. You are literally doing what you're meant to do in your life, but also in the lives of others. This 
I could not have asked for a better combination between the dolphin and the wolf. And it seems so strange because I wouldn't normally think those two energies go together, but it really does. Because you know how to stand on your own. You know how to be that fierce protector. You know how to guide and lead, but you also know how to connect. And, and there's this beautiful, delicate balance that I'm feeling here. And it, the balance that is coming in within this family dynamic is coming from you, from you stepping into this energy. So let's take a look at what your Akashic records say about it. Yeah, yeah. five of scrolls in diversity. 14 with the initiation of Count St. Germain. And the four of keys clearing the way. Okay, so we've got a five, a five, and then another four. So ones, fours, and fives may be significant. Um, those may be the number of children that you have or the age of the children. Um, but more than anything, we talked about the wolf and how the wolf really nurtures all the different parts of the pack. And that's what this diversity is. This diversity card also speaks to getting to know each other because then you get to know each other's differences. And the more that you get to know each other's differences, the more that you can harness each individual and their personal power and their personal growth and the, the passions that they have and help them understand that they have this life that they have unlimited possibilities in and you're, you're gifting them this this kind of state of understanding that they belong. This initiation of the Count St. Germain, I'm getting the sense of you're showing them that they belong as their own unique self. You know, you've got four people on this card in front of St. Germain and they're all different people. They're in different clothes from different places, different times, different ethnicities, different genders. And they're standing there but they're receiving the same energy, the same love, the same awareness, this everything that, that we want to give to our children, they're getting it in equality while also harnessing the beauty of them being individuals. This clearing the way card talks about how, you know, these two people are trying to get to their home, but there's a, there's a tree that has been felled and is now across the path, but you can see he has an ax there. And so this is Literally, as as you continue moving forward and accepting each other's differences and harnessing this beautiful, we are all unique, but we are all interconnected energy, you really do help clear the way for any kind of emotional blockages that could happen from being from a divided household or a split household. And it is a very beautiful thing because in this day and age, I have to tell you, as a as a parent, as a parent with kids in split families, this is not an easy path to walk. And especially when you're in a spiritual lifestyle, it's not an easy path to walk because there are two families at a bare minimum that have to be taken in, into consideration. In my situation, there's four. And that may be something that you're experiencing too with all these fours on the board. There may be four, four issues or, or families that have to be taken into consideration. Um, so there's me with my kids. So there's my set of me and my husband and, and my kids. And then there are my kids as father and stepmother and that situation. So we have that going on. And then it's me and my husband and his ex-wife and her husband. And so we really do have this crazy family dynamic and you may be experiencing the same where you have to parent two different ways based off of which which set of children you're parenting and if that's the case and there's that stress with that a good way to clear the way is to sit down with your significant other and say okay I understand that this is how it works in this situation I understand that this is how it works in this situation but what is right for us for our home Co-parenting is a great thing. Parallel parenting is also a great thing. And they can be done at the same time. Parallel parenting is where you both keep in communication with each other, but you parent in your own ways. Co-parenting is when everybody parents together. 
unilaterally. Sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. And it does take getting to know everybody in the situation, not just the children, not just your significant other, but their past significant other. And that's something that can be challenging. It can be difficult. It can be emotional because you don't want to have to get to know your your significant other's ex. But when there's children involved, if you don't, it creates more tension than anything. And when you allow this to happen, now you're bringing in all the different facets of everything, but you still are this queen and the wolf and and you're still standing here and saying, okay, I understand we're all connected. We all have this family unit, but this is how it works in my home. And when it comes to this, 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 and this health, wellness, emotions, schooling, things like that, then we can all be on the same page. But when it comes to rules and regulations and, you know, special things of this nature, those are specific to each household because we all have our own style and we all are very diverse. And that takes a lot of respect for yourself, but also for others. And so spirit really wants to acknowledge that. And we have the king of wands here. And you know, this king of wands, actually like the, the energy just kind of feels hard and, and almost the, the look on the lion's face where normally I would say stoic, it almost looks angry. So you may be struggling with some anger. And then we've got a reversed six of swords, which I normally don't read reversals, but it came out that way. So there may be some issues with walking away from the past, just, just some conflict around letting the past go. And I can understand that. But let me get the final card for you guys, and then I'll get the back of the deck energy. Okay. And we have the Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. Okay. And on the back, we have the Nine of Pentacles. Okay. So the first message that's coming through is about um, codependence and interdependency and individuality within a family unit. Sometimes it can feel, and I'm getting this, this King of Wands energy more from um, the children, more like I'm going to keep fighting, fighting, fighting against it because they aren't sure how to heal completely here. But what I'm seeing here is the more that you stand in this queen energy and the wolf energy, the more that you do this, you're actually showing them how to harness this energy without being angry, without being reactive. This reactivity is not something that's going to last a long time, I'm feeling. It's more along the lines of learning how to, to transform this Six of Swords into being upright. If, if my nails want to. <laughs> okay, we're going to do it this way. I wanted to keep it nice and neat for you guys. I don't know. I'm in like a deep aesthetic energy these days. But if we want to transform this six of swords upright, what we're looking at here, what I'm hearing is it, it, it's about showing them that no matter what happens, no matter where you go to, no matter what you leave behind, no matter what changes, you're still going to be together. And that's a hard thing to guarantee when you're in a relationship with somebody else and, and you're in this dynamic. But with the Wheel of Fortune coming out afterwards, the Wheel of Fortune talks about destiny and fate, and you've got two birds up on top. And it, to me, it's saying that if you know within your heart that this is what's right for you, you don't have to fear that who you are and your independence and your uniqueness is going to have to be sacrificed for the sake of keeping the peace. But rather, it's okay to see that sometimes there's going to be turmoil, and it's okay to stand very firm and say, okay, this is what we're doing. This is how it goes. But we are all together. We are all a family. And that does still go and help clear the way. On, on a, a deep soul level here, you're being shown all the different ways in which you can relate 
not just to to yourself, but to others, to children, to adults that are just so different from you. You're learning how to kind of move away from this angry, reactive energy and step into this state of, I know who I am and I know my worth and I know what I have to offer. And so I'm going to clear this path. I'm going to, I'm getting so such similar energy between the clearing the way and the six of swords. And you know, if you think about it, that actually is such a huge blessing to have the six of swords come in reversed in terms of this clearing the way, because when you clear the way, when this clearing the way is reversed, then the, the passage towards home has been cleared. So to me, this is saying that the more that you step into the divine feminine energy and really harness that softness, you're, you're clearing the way by showing them that the past still matters, but you have everyone together, working together, and that this whole thing is really what is meant for all of you. Because you're not meant to, it's like you're not meant to build everything alone. It's, it's something that you're meant to see all around you as being part of what you're building, part of what you are aiming for. You may have been in this nine of pentacles like I've built myself in my life. You may not have your own children and be in this step parent role and really feel out of your depth, especially if you're in a spiritual life. And I do feel some of that energy here. Um, and I'm not inferring just because you're on a tarot reading. I just feel as though it's, there's a spiritual side to you, but it's not your prominent side right now. And that's okay. But when you stand, when you stand in this strong energy, even if you have never been in this role before as a parent, and now you're all of a sudden a step parent, that doesn't make you lesser of a parent. In my eyes and in the eyes of the divine, what I'm seeing is when you step into that role, when you stepped into that role, you took on a new light, a completely different light than what you had before. And it was like this massive karmic and energetic clearing for you, like a bunch of activations. So this destined path that you're on right now as a step parent is there because you have really moved the wheel in your favor by loving the children that you are loving for no other reason than that they deserve it and that you do love them and that's such a beautiful beautiful energy please take to heart that Everything that you're doing is the right thing. Even in the moments where you doubt yourself or you're sleeping against yourself as a parent because it's new to you, every new parent feels that way. And you have it doubly hard because you have to learn how to stand on your own while also working with a lot of others. And it's not always easy. But it is seen by the divine and it is protected and loved and nurtured from within you and that helps you to bring it out. All right, pile one. This is all I'm getting for you. I want to say thank you so much for what you do in your family, for yourself, but definitely for the children. It is a beautiful gift. Thank you so much to your guides and my guides for facilitating the connection between our energies. And thank you to Spirit for bringing these messages forth and the inspiration for them. If this resonated, please hit that like button, share the video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And down in the comment section below, let me know how this resonated, how you're doing. I am always, always open to the feedback and, and to hearing how this impacted. All right, you guys, I love you all. Bye. Hello, pile two.
If you chose the second card in pile, you chose the card 37, which reduces to a 10 or a 1. And it says, act as if your partner is here. Whether you have someone in your life or not, act as if they are with you. So you will always consider them. And you also chose this orange calcite. Now, this orange calcite correlates to the sacral chakra, to the water element. And I'm getting the deep emotional waters. This is your message. And forgive me if I get a little emotional because I'm going to, I'm being called to share a kind of difficult story with you. And the reason is, is because this is a rare situation with step parents. What I'm getting from this is it's not acting as if your partner is here. It's a level of respect for the other parent. And that's something that is, in my experience, really quite rare. Excuse me. So my, my children's father and I have a very difficult past. We have a difficult relationship. And one of the things that I have always been very adamant about is fixing. I, I've, I've always been a fixer. I have been wanting to make sure it's always okay. Because nobody was there when I was a kid to tell me that it was okay. Um, and I grew up with a stepdad. And even before that, my mom's boyfriend, the first boyfriend she had after my father passed away, something he would always say was, I'm not your dad, but I'm the next best thing. And there was something inside of me that just broke hearing that because it was like he was discounting my dad. It was like he was putting himself into my, my dad's shoes. Um, and then my stepdad never wanted to be in my dad's shoes or in a father's shoes in my life. And that was so challenging, so difficult for me as, as a child and dealing with the trauma of having lost my father at a young age and that daddy wound, you know, the daddy wound, it, it's a real thing and, and it's very hard to overcome. But when I got divorced, one of the things that I maintained from my vows to my first husband was to always respect his role as a parent. And it was not always reciprocated. And that was a challenge. That was, that was a hardship. Because my, my children would come home and they would say, you know, this really upset me. Dad said this about you or dad said this about you and that really upset me. And for a while I would approach him about it and my kids would be called liars. And that's not what I said. And, 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 you know, the way that those things play out with someone who won't take personal responsibility. And so I shifted to to telling my kids things like it's not your fault and that's that may be how he sees it but please know that this is my truth or they'd come home and say things like I don't think my dad loves me and I would tell them dad loves you he just doesn't know how to show you in the way that you need but I want you to know that you have a place here. And to my husband's credit, he really stepped in. He really like, he stepped into that role in such a huge way. And my kids call him dad, but they didn't until he and I had gotten married. And that was something that took 
three years of, you know, they call them David and, and then we got married and they said, but, but dad told us if you and David ever got married, we could call him dad, that it was okay to call him dad because he has us call our stepmom mom because they're married. So he said it was okay. And then my kids wanted to, you know, draw pictures and say to dad on it, just to get a feel for it. This entire journey that my kids went through with this, David stepped in and was always, I will be your dad. I will be your a father figure for you. I respect your dad. And he has always stuck so firmly with that. And, and he, he helps me to find clarity and to work to be a, a better co-parent because of the lessons that he taught me. And the reason I'm sharing all of this with you is because this card and the energy that I feel for you is that this is something that you do. You respect that other set of parents or the other parent. And you may not always get that back. And that makes it really hard because being the bigger person in, in some of these situations, especially if it has been a traumatic past relationship, being the bigger person, man, you get angry, you get mad. Like, why? Why do I always have to be the bigger person? Why do I always have to be the adult? Why do I always have to take that first step? And I was talking to David just the other day about how I used to feel that way. And I've shifted to realizing that being the bigger person does not mean you're fixing someone else's messes. It means that you are setting the tone. You are setting the example. You are taking that step. And showing that that path of equality and, and respect can, can be there. That it is, it is a path that's possible for everyone involved. And it can be really, really challenging when you're in the midst of it and you feel like, well, I'm always picking up the pieces. I'm always cleaning up the messes. When do I get the recognition? When do I get the respect? And I am here to tell you right here and now that I see that. I experience that myself in my own way. Even if it's a different story than what you have gone through, I have seen it, felt it, experienced it. And it is a huge, huge strength of heart that you have doing this. This consideration of how others takes and opinions and, and perceptions and feelings are in a situation where you are a step parent or when you're dealing with step parents as a parent, however it plays out for you, it's so huge. And if you're a step parent and you always consider your partner's ex, your, your stepchildren's other set of parents or other parent, what you are doing is not, it, it's not just because it, it brings peace to you and your relationship or because it's good for the kids. You're, you're this shining leader and example for everyone involved in this process, in this situation. And it is profoundly impactful and will be something that these children carry forth as they go out into the world and it makes them better people. It makes them more caring, more considerate, more kind, but also strong and firm in who they are. And they will be able to understand and discern the difference between someone's perception and the truth of who they are simply because you're doing something that is just the right thing to do. And spirit wants you to know right here and now that that is seen, that is acknowledged, and that is a beautiful, beautiful gift you have. 
So let's get some of the overall energies of you as a step parent here. We have the card arrows. The B. And the zebra. Okay, this is beautiful. So Eros talks about romantic love. It's Cupid love. So this is showing me that the essence of the connection that you have, this, this connection that has brought you into a place of being a step parent, it's a divinely guided, a divinely blessed connection. But it doesn't mean that it doesn't come without its own work that has to be done. And you understand that all love, whether romantic or otherwise, all love is literally beauty. And it takes work. Real, real love takes work. It, it's not like, you know, the romance movies that you see where it's just beautiful and, and magical. There are absolutely those moments, but it takes work and it takes the work of accepting everybody's differences and seeing everybody for their own uniqueness and really embracing it and, and helping others see that it's the differences that we share that when we work together with those differences, we really do understand love in a new way. With this arrows card, I'm drawn to the astrology and Eros, the, the comet, it talks about how sometimes when you love someone, you have to take a step back and allow that person that you love to make their choices, to take their, their own path and their own actions. Because Eros and Psyche were, were married and Eros said, you can't look at me. I will give you the world that you can't look at me because Psyche was human and Eros was a god and he didn't want her to love him because he was a god. He wanted her to love him because he was him. You don't want to be loved for this and you want to show others that it's not about the, the gifts you have or the things that you can do or, or anything like that. It's about the essence of the person that is worthy of love. And Psyche had to go through her own journey after she betrayed Arrow. She had to go through her own journey in order to reunite them. But it didn't mean that while she was on that journey, Eros wasn't watching every step of the way. Waiting, hoping, trusting that they would be together again. When you step into this role, or as you have stepped into this role, doing everything that you're doing, putting in the work, embracing the the differences in everybody and helping everybody see that they can work through their differences and really bring forth a new awareness of what love can be in, in a split family or a, or a mixed family dynamic like this. It's healing in so many ways, but it really does make the impact upon the children in the situation so profound that they go into the world as such beautiful souls who know how to work at love, who know how to work at seeing the differences and embracing the differences and not judging based off of the differences in, in really respecting every part of the dynamic that is a family. I am getting a message that if some of you our step parents and the parent that you are embodying now is the role of a parent who has passed. You honoring that past parent, the lost life and, and their stories and their essence and you bringing them into the family. It's something that it's a magical thing. It's a magical thing that you do. And I get the feeling that with this pile, it's like, oh, whatever. It, it, it just is how I, it, it is what it is or, or it's just how I am. But no, I'm telling you, it is rare. It is the zebra. It is that rare. 
And I want to thank you personally for it because I have already told you that isn't my experience. Let's take a look at what the Akashic Records say about this part of your journey on a soul level. So we have the Four of Scrolls with the Karmic Trench, the Five of Forces with Summer and Winter, and the Eight of Keys with the Master Arts. I love that. Okay, so th these cards, especially this Karmic Trench, this Karmic Trench talks about behaviors, beliefs, actions taken in our life that really dig us into this trench that we have to dig ourselves out of. Now, karma is nothing more or less than the result of the actions or inactions in our life. It's neither good nor bad. It's just a response. It's an energetic response to what it is that we do. So if we do the right thing, then the karmic trench that we're digging is actually beneficial. So in this card, if you flip it upside down, you know, it talks about how you've fallen out of the karmic trench. But if you think about it, it anytime that you're doing something, you're building karma, whether it, it is a positive turnaround or an impactful, seemingly negative turnaround. But he's in a field and he's digging in this field. And in that way, you think about the work that you do as the bee, the work that you do to embrace this part of everything, to really show and highlight what what love looks like on so many different levels. You you show them this, and it is the same as planting a garden. You go through and you go down the line, and then you do the work. You dig it out, and you you weed everything out, and you really do that work because in life we have this choice between what we do being like the summer or what we do being like the winter and you understand this. And so you aim for the summer because the alternate is this desolation, this, this point of, of feeling like everything is just cold. And the more that you work at this energy, the, the more your soul is, is planting seeds of such beautiful abundance. And then this master artisan is someone who teaches others. You go out into the world and you show them, you teach them what this is like, how this looks, how to harness this. And you, be, you are the master and you're teaching others. When this gets reversed, then you... You start receiving all the blessings back, but that's not even what you're worried about because you want the blessings to be received by the children. And that's such a noble thing. And because of that nobility, because of that true essence of, I don't mind if I put in the work here as long as it benefits the people that I love, that brings such a beautiful, beautiful energy into your life in all aspects. And it's never going to be an easy journey because no parenting, whether it's parenting the child, give me just a minute, the mailman is here and the dogs get upset. Okay, I apologize for that. But what I was saying was, I will never tell you that parenting, whether it's parenting your own child or parenting a child that comes from a your your significant other's previous relationship is an easy journey. I I say more often than I can can tell you that there's just no guidebook. There there's no guidebook for parenting. There are a lot of self help books and quote unquote guidebooks. But in the day and age that we're living in, and especially on a spiritual level, there's really no guidebook because we can't fathom the amount of things that we're going to come into contact with or or come to have to work through and heal together as a family when you're on a spiritual journey when your children are on a spiritual journey when there are things that you have to embrace things that you have to do things that you have to work at there just isn't a guide for it. 
And so we're all, we're all really flying by the seat of our pants on it. But what I'm seeing here is, is this act that you do of utter respect, even if the other party doesn't deserve it, you still give it. You are setting this beautiful example. And, and for those of you who are parenting children who have lost a parent and you have stepped into that role, what you are doing is making sure that grief does not destroy them, that grief does not keep them from living their life to the fullest, and you keep them aware that love, even when a life is lost and passed, that love transcends this physical body, that love is always there, and that there is a beauty in holding on to memories and honoring while still moving forward. What you do here as a step parent is such a beautiful thing. And I, I am personally going to thank you as many times as I can, because I can tell you my teenage self would have loved to have a step parent such as yourself. And Willow says, hi. <laughs> I swear, Willow is so deeply attuned to <laughs> spiritual healing. I, whenever I take her for walks, she always seems to find the people that are the most upset or the most in need of her love. And she just performs automatic animal therapy. She's just been such a blessing in my life. Hmm. Can we shuffle the cards? Do you want to sit on my lap? Or do you want down? Hmm? Okay. Don't bite the cards. <laughs> She's like, ma, ma. Okay, down you go. Go get your stick. Spirit, can we get some guidance or closing messages for pile two? All right, we've got the Knight of Cups, the Two of Wands, the Eight of Pentacles. I feel like there's one more that wants to come out for your pile. I feel that very strongly. One more wants to come out. There it is. I knew there was another one. And the magician. Okay. And then we've got I'm sorry. We have the Ten of Cups. Um with this Knight of Cups. There's a message coming through between Eros and the Knight of Cups and the Two of Wands here, especially, that I want you, I want, I want to share with you. What I'm, what I'm hearing, um, and I'm going to open myself, my channel up a little bit more here. Give me just a moment. Okay, as I open my channel up, I am actually feeling the energy of parents coming through. Um, I'm going to let them speak through me. This is one of my one of my gifts that I have yet to fully share on this channel. So I'm going to share it now. So I'm going to essentially let them speak through me.
when you when you got into the relationship that you're in, the essence of it was true, like true blue romantic love. And that is the foundational, the foundational stone of your relationship is that love and that connection with your partner. It is meant to be this way because this is not, this is not something that they have ever experienced before. Both your partner and, and your partner's child or children, it's going to be different for each one of you, how many children are involved, but the romantic love that you have is a key component to everything because you are showing what it looks like for the future of relationships. You are showing as embodying what it is like to be romantic, to love another, but to be a parent, to love your children, but still loving your partner more. And that is not a bad thing because what that shows children is that there are different kinds of love. When you move forward from here, know that everything that you do from your heart is truly expanding the world and minimizing the fears within the hearts of both your significant other, but also of the children involved. And I am getting now a message about um, a family that is made up of his, hers, and ours in, in whatever way that looks. It could be um, through adoption. It could be through having another child after um, a divorce or separation kind of situation like breaking up and, and having more children. All of that is part of this. And we can spend a lot of time questioning whether it matters for the future, whether whether the the trials and tribulations and the struggles of the role of parenting and step parenting especially is worth the love that you have or whether the love that you have can survive the trials and tribulations of the other side of the coin. But you have unlimited resources and your soul and your heart know the value of this journey as a, as a step parent, as a parent, as a mixed family, as a blended family. It may take work. It may feel like you have to constantly adjust, readjust, perfect, try again, over and over and over again. But you have every resource to create true harmony magic in your life and what you do by embracing that essence of, of true soulmate, true twin flame, however you want to, to define it, but your true other half, the person that that you come to in a state of wholeness and you know you're in a state of wholeness. And because of that, it elevates the connection that you have, your teaching. And setting the tone, setting the example for the ways in which we are meant to work through relationships, through families, through parenting, through step parenting, co-parenting, parallel parenting, the whole nine yards for the future, because you are weaving a sort of familial magic that the world doesn't see and being shown the ways that the world worked back in in tribal times where all the families worked together and they all harmonized together, but they still all had their own individual like I'm seeing huts, of course. I'm seeing huts, but how they all worked together. And it was a large group unit 
with separate home lives, but everybody blended together. And it is the essence of like a soul family, but you're doing this in your family, in your life. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And spirit wants you to know, like, this is your 10 of cups, even in the moments where it's the hardest and it doesn't feel like it, this is your 10 of cups. This is your happily ever after your two turtle doves and all the other 12 crazy things that you get on the 12 days of Christmas. It's, it is everything. And so no matter how hard it is, <laughs> spirit, <laughs> spirit's funny right now. No matter how hard it is, remember that repetition is the key to learning. And the reason why I say that's funny is because it's literally what my husband and I tell our children all the time. Whenever they go through struggles and trials and tribulations and hardships, it's repetition is the key to learning. Um, I'm going to keep bringing a little outside before we close up, guys. All right, I'm back. But this repetition is the key to learning. It's this always coming back to each other, always coming back to the heart, always coming back to the love and always understanding that no matter what, you have everything that you need within your family unit to continue to build on this life that you have because it is exactly the dream. It is the dream. And the dream is going to look different for everybody. But it doesn't matter what the outside looks like. It matters how it feels on the inside. And what I'm picking up from you guys is such deep, deep sense of love and, and loyalty and dedication. There's a lot of Cancerian energy here. You may have a lot of fourth house placements. Or you may consider looking at synastry charts between you and your stepchildren and seeing the energy with the overlays of fourth houses, where the fourth houses fall, because there's something here with Cancerian energy in the fourth house, where when you understand the flow, it helps with the build. It it's as though you're you're creating everything around you all the time, and everything that you create starts 100% with the connection that you have with your partner or your significant other. And so, as hard as this journey can be, what you're doing, it's not just mobile. It is literally spiritually guided, blessed, protected, and healing. And I'm I'm seeing ripples like from from the love that you have with with the person that you're with and how you exude that love into your connections and how that ripples out into the the world in ways that you may never see or you will in some ways, but the impact goes so, so, so deep that emotional waters run deep. It's like the impact that you have on this journey that you have taken as a step parent in this connection, in this way, impacts the collective in a way that reminds us of the ways that it, our ancestors loved each other, worked together, harmonized, but it was all based in love first and foremost. So pile two, from the depths of my soul, thank you for what you do. Because you being a step parent is a spiritual gift that is a blessing on the world. So thank you so much. I admire you deeply. I want to say thank you so much to your guides and my guides for this energy connection because these messages and, and experiencing this energy I've only seen it once before, and that's through my husband, and he has been my beacon of hope for all of the pains that 
my children and I have endured. And so thank you for being another group, set of people, collective, doing this. It brings so much hope. Spirit, thank you for, for bringing me to this message and, and these messages through me for the healing that it is. Thank you. If this resonated, please do the YouTube things, like this video, share it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Down in the description box, there are, there is a link to my author page on Amazon. If you would like to see another side of this, see, you know, what it's like outside of what you do so you can understand how different it is, both my books, Chemistry with Kismet, as well as Something Spiritually Catchy talks a lot about the journey that I went through as a child, but also that I went through as an adult and as a parent and how much of a struggle it has been and how much overcoming we've had to do. And I think it would help. So thank you. Please let me know in the comment section below. Let other pile twos know in the comment section below because the more support we have together, the, the stronger we are. All right, pile two. I gotta say, I love you guys so much. Thank you. I will see you at my next reading. Bye. Hello, pile three. If you chose the third card, you are limitless. And the white blue sodalite stone, this is the message for you about step parenting. I actually, let's see, yeah, it's on this wrist. I actually wear sodalite almost daily. Um, sodalite is a beautiful, beautiful stone to bridge the intuition and the logic together. And with this, you are a limitless card. It says you are limitless. You can do anything you choose. And it's the card number four. The energy that I get from this pile, which doesn't surprise me because I see this a lot with my pile threes or fours, is the energy of being a, a parent or a step parent in this situation to spiritual children. It's a world right now that is utterly changing. Everything in the world is changing and so rapidly. I'm someone who always says change is one of the only constants you can ever bank on in life. Love and change because those are the two constants. I grew up in a time where I wasn't raised to believe in the, the possibility, the potentiality, in limitlessness, in infinite abundance. It wasn't within my awareness. It wasn't within the, the scope of the parenting that I had. As a spiritual parent, this has been a challenge because I didn't come into the fullness of my spirituality until well into my parenting. But my husband has been this way. It's, he's not, he's not, I wouldn't consider him spiritual and he really doesn't either. But the essence of limitlessness, this is something that he helped teach me and teach my children simultaneously. And that happens sometimes when you come into a new relationship, a new partnership, a new connection, a new union with someone where the lessons that you learn from them are some of the most profound. I get the energy that you're, you're the person, the step parent, the partner who is grounded yet believes in all the mystical and all the magical. And you are like the embodiment of the unicorn because you can be incredibly pragmatic, but 
at the same time, you're like, yeah, anything's possible. Just like, what do you want to do? Just go do it. Like, if you want it, you can do it. You can achieve that. And when you give that to a child in any way, shape, or form, you're giving them a structured foundation of hope, of faith, of, of belief, of blessings, of abundance. And it doesn't have to be, and what I, I'm picking up so hard is that it doesn't have to be based off of any reflection anywhere else. You know, as much conflict as there is with Bill Gates, the truth of the matter is, is he built himself and his life and, and his legacy in a garage against all odds. There's a lot of Aquarian energy here. You may be an Aquarius or maybe your um, stepchild or children are Aquarius. And that energy, even if they're not, it doesn't have to be to, for this to resonate, for this to be your message. But that's just the energy that's here, like Uranus and, and Aquarius. When you raise your children on the foundation of You can be anything you choose. You can do anything you choose. You can accomplish anything you want to accomplish. You're giving them this structure, this foundation of self-esteem, self-worth, self-empowerment. Doing that at a young age just revolutionizes how they will grow up and move into the world. It, It changes so much to allow for this to be how you parent. And I get that this is a pile that when you came into this role, you came into this role with the fullness of who you are. And it didn't matter any kind of of structure that came before because you knew within your heart and your soul that this is what you have to bring to the table. This is what you have to offer. And you are offering exactly what the truth is, is that there is unlimited possibility in this world and unlimited abundance. And we live in, in a universe that is constantly creating more and more and more. And it's not about excess or anything like that. It's about the act of creativity and the belief that you can do anything. And now I'm being brought to my son and actually a conversation I had earlier today when I was at the pharmacy with a woman about my son and he he talks about how he goes well I'm going to invent teleportation I'm, I'm going to be the person who invents teleportation and I told him like go for it I, you know I want a Bahamas vacation do it but he, he got to a phase at one point where he said you know I don't, he's like, well, I'm going to have to get this job first and, and, and be able to make money so I can do this. And I said, well, but buddy, why, why can't you make money with what you want to do? And he said, well, you know, it's really hard. Like, and he, he had come back from a weekend with his father and stepmother. And this was like prominent for him. And there was a talk about school and and cost and everything. I don't know if it was a talk with him or around him. The details of it doesn't matter. But he came back. He left in this energy of being limitless. And he came back in a restricted energy. It was a very eight of swords energy. And he and I were walking to school and I told him, I said, but what if you could? Like, what if you could just do what you want to do? And you could see the light come back into his eyes. And I tell you this story because it was a shift of homes and and parenting styles. And when he came back, the light was gone. And really all it takes is one moment, one conversation, one encouragement of you can do this. This This is something you can do. And, and that light just came right back. You know, he, he loves doing readings like this with me. He loves t- 
talking to me about these things and about insights and wisdom and kids have that. Kids have those insights and those wisdoms. When they go through things like broken homes, broken families, parents who break up, who get divorced, new siblings or new families, new parents, it's all very confusing and, and it can feel as though all the structure is gone, all, all the foundation has, has disappeared. To come into a child's life in that state and to be the person that says, you know what, you can do anything, you can be anything, you get to do whatever you choose, so what do you want to do? And then you nurture that and you harness that with them. You are teaching them spiritual lessons that take a lot of us as adults years and years and years to overcome all the conditioning before. You're conditioning them with this openness, this this higher awareness, so that they don't limit themselves. They don't put themselves in a bubble or a box, but they see the box and they go, well, what can I do with the box? How can I transform the box? Let me take the box and make it something else. For you to do this for for a child that I'm hearing you didn't you didn't rear, like perhaps it's you're doing this with a child who has already been conditioned and you're working on deconditioning, then for you to do that, it's uh, the number one word that I keep hearing for almost collectively for this reading is noble, but it's more than that. It's utterly unique. It's a true blessing. It's a true spiritual gift that you're giving. It's not heavy. It's, it's just kind of like, this is how it is. Dream the world that you want to dream and let's make it happen. And that's such a beautiful thing because when, when you show them, it's like you lead by example because this is your root. I don't know if you were raised this way or if it's something that you really had to struggle with to get to, but you really are genuinely in a role where you're paying it forward and it is a beautiful thing. So let's take a look at the energies of you as a step parent. We have the card nine with the hunter. There's a lot of horses and unicorns. Ah, tarantula. And the deer. Oh, this is interesting energy. This is the way that you are as a step parent. You're so loving and so nurturing, but you know exactly how to teach your stepchildren how to have strength, how to move forward, how to, how to see the prize and go for the prize and make sure that that prize is exactly what it is that they want and what they're seeking. And it goes back to this limitlessness. It's, it's this innate belief that most Children grow out of, by the age of seven or eight, they grow out of this because life comes in. But whether you've gone and nurtured this within yourself now as an adult, you're nurturing this within them as well, just by being you. You may be um, an entrepreneur, you may be a spiritual teacher, or even like a tarot reader like myself, and you're showing them that you can do it. Um, it. It's kind of like, let me show you what it looks like to be up against every possible obstacle and odd. Now, let me show you the strength and the resilience that you have to overcome it. And you know that you have this, this ability, like it, things can look the worst. Things can can look the scariest. But when the, you have that, that softness within, it doesn't matter how things look. It only matters that you know that you can do this. 
you ground yourself into exactly what you're meant to do and you just fight for it. And you know that as long as you are fighting to move forward in a passionate way, there's no amount of, of logic that can't be ameliorated with your intuition. And it's such a beautiful thing. It really is. Let's take a look at what the Akashic Records say about this as part of your soul. We've got the one of forces with the Akashic field, the two with the Akashic library. Wow. And six with the divine physician. Holy, I, I told you guys, you're, you're teaching spiritual children, but you're definitely deeply spiritual yourselves. And I, I'm picking up that a lot of, of this awareness and this hope that you have within you has come directly from the Akashic. You, you just, you tap into it, you pull it out and then you use it to heal. But it's not, it, it, it okay. For, so for some of you, it may be that you're a Reiki healer or that you're, you're raising children who are natural Reiki healers. And that would explain a lot why my son and his energy and lessons are here because my son is just innately attuned to how to use Reiki. I've never attuned him or taught him, even even though I, you know we work with it every day. But it's this this essence that he just knows. He he goes to school and he like pulls pains out of teachers and and, and students, and he can. It, it's like it's a tangible thing for him to do. And I've never seen anybody do that before. It, it's incredible. He actually taught me. But it it's like this is part of part of what's written in in the book of your soul. Um it you just are naturally attuned to this field. And as a step parent, you're actually teaching your children, what it's like to walk through this life, knowing that they're, oh my gosh, knowing that they're walking in two realms at once. <coughs> Excuse me. I just, I felt like a, weirdly enough, it felt like I swallowed a bug on one second. Like I had an image of a motorcycle and it felt like I swallowed a bug. It's very strange. Um, you may live somewhere where you see the Aurora Borealis a lot. Canada, um, I know in North Dakota, we see it off and on, but more Northern, Northern, you tend to see that. I want to say you can see it in Alaska too, but there's this essence of whenever there's extra colors in the sky, it's a really, it's almost like you go you take your stepchildren or child with you and you guys go and just watch, like maybe watch a sunset or a sunrise and look at all the colors and the clouds and everything. And even though you guys seem to be choosing the forms that it takes, in reality, what Spirit's showing me is that you form them in the Akashic and then it shows up and then you acknowledge what you've created. And you and your stepchildren have this resonance with each other. And it's literally like there's so much protection that you have over them, but you also know to let them free. This isn't, it's just on another level. Um, if you're wondering, if, if you're wondering why it feels so much like your stepchildren are your own children, it's because there's a soul resonance. You were their child in a previous life. Yeah, I, I'm definitely picking up you were their child in a previous life. Um, Southern France for some of you. Um, for others of you, like um, colonial times in America, my nose it is. Uh, we have the hermit, which doesn't surprise me because the hunter is also the card nine, and that they're looking at each other. This is a this energy right here. This is what you 
you bring to them. It's this awareness of, um, you are so deeply aware of your own inner light and you know how to take that inner light and use it to, to guide your way so that you can, it, it's okay. This is going to be, and um, I want to say this is going to sound strange, but I feel like you guys are going to get it. Okay. Um, and I just saw that it was 19 minutes on the clock and I felt like I needed to mention the number 19 to you guys. That may be significant. We do have nine here, but 19 felt significant. But with this hermit card, it's kind of like two things. First of all, it's like you know how to leap ahead. Put the, the lantern of, of your inner light like on a light post. And then you pop back and you get on your horse. And now you have your path because you've already gone forward enough to do that. And... And because you do that, you're able to show your stepchildren exactly that. That's one of them. The other one is that your inner light shines so brightly that even if you don't um, do anything out in the world, like you, I pick up a lot of spiritual energy um, and psychic energy with you guys, but it may not be something that you do. However, you see the same resonance within your stepchildren and so you may take what you have within you and actually shine that back for them so that they understand how to move forward how to, how to get there and i gotta tell you guys there's a lot of chakra alignment like they like did you have your kundalini awakening after becoming a step parent it's possible that your stepchildren actually triggered that for you. Okay, we've got the Page of Wands, the Knight of Swords, and on the back of the deck, we <laughs> have the star, the, the star is Aquarius energy. I love that. Okay, so this interaction between the hunter and the hermit, however, however it plays out in, in your um, role as a step parent in your interactions. However, this energy plays out. It literally like illuminates this, this path of, of youthful inspiration all the time. It's almost like you guys love to play. You, you love to play the what if game, but it's like, oh, it's like, would you rather, but it's like, what if this is possible. And then you, you elaborate on, on just mystical, magical possibilities. And through that, you help bring such deep clarity of, of the mind. The page of wands and the knight of swords is like blending these youthful divine masculine and divine feminine energies together. And it is like the logic and the, and, and the intuition just blending together. And it's such a wondrous thing here. It, it's like you just know what they need. You you know exactly what they need, what they need to hear, what they need to believe within themselves. And you bring that forth. And in doing so, like I said, your foundations are literally built upon hope. And that's the energy coming from the star card is just this pouring out of hope, like this libation of hope. And that's what you do. The, the light that you have and the love that you share with these children, the nurturing, but also the strength and the resilience that you teach them, that you show them is so divinely guided. And it is such a beautiful, beautiful like energy. Your souls seem so intertwined and, and connected, but also as though you're just wisps, just wisps passing through. And it, for me, it feels like there's, um, there may be a transition point. So like I said, you may have come into a child's life when they were older and they may be getting to the end of, you know, high school at this point. 
And that transition point is kind of like you want to make sure that you've done everything that you can do for them to go out into the world. And that's something that I want to let you know that Spirit's showing me like they have everything that they need. You you have taught them how to connect on a different level. You've taught them how to heal on a different level. So even if right now there may be a lot of this Knight of Swords energy going on, like there may be kind of like this sharpness of mind and, and quickness to battle, they understand that the inner light is the path. They know this inner light is the path and they will follow it. And so it's okay to, to allow it out. It's okay to allow them like out of the nest. It's okay to allow them to do what they need to do. Even if it's a, a seeming quote unquote mistake, even if they messed up, it's okay to do that because they'll come back. They will learn. You have taught them correctly. And it wasn't, it wasn't whatever, whatever this night of, Swords energy that I'm picking up here is this this almost kind of conflict energy. It wasn't anything that was ever not going to happen. But spirit wants you to know that what you have done here is you've helped them understand how to truly connect with their intuition throughout this process and how to use intuition and logic together in a beautiful harmony. And because of that, they may feel like they um, veer off in all different directions a lot of the time. But they know the path of the archery. They know what to do. They know how to take aim and, and hit a target and hit a goal. They know how to do that because you've taught them. And because you've taught them, they will do that. But we all have our own journeys. And, and for, I feel like for a lot of you, their journeys are about to begin on their own. And it's okay for you to feel a little sad. It's okay for you to feel like you need to withdraw a little bit. But please know that you have done such beautiful work with them. You have instilled them with a foundation of hope, of awareness, of enlightenment, in a way that they wouldn't have had had you not been in their life. You did that. For them. And you did that because of love, because of who you are. Wow. Pile free. All these messages have all been so profound and so deep and healing and amazing. And I am ever so grateful for your presence here, for what you do in the world, but for what you do in your family. Thank you so much. I want to say thank you to your guides and my guides for facilitating the connection and these energies together. Thank you, Spirit, for the inspiration for these messages and for channeling these messages through me. I'm always ever so honored. Pile 3, if this resonated, please hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, share the video with your friends and family or on social media, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Down in the comment section below, let me know how it resonated. I would love to hear back from you. I would love your feedback. All right. Pile three, I'm going to leave you here. I love you all, and I will see you at my next reading. Bye. Hello, pile four. If you chose the fourth card, it's the card 20 with I love you and this raw labradorite stone. So the card says, I love you. These are powerful words. The labradorite stone is best known as a stone of psychic protection. And this card with the number 20, it gives a nod to the judgment card in tarot and listening to the calling of the soul. When you say the words, I love you, to a child, and especially to a child that isn't yours, a child that you have stepped into the role of raising as though they are your own. What you may not realize you're doing in that, 
in that moment is you are showing them. You are showing these children or this child that love isn't something that is mandatory. It's not something required. I grew up with a stepfather from the age of 13. And I honestly can't tell you, 22 years later, I can't tell you that I have ever heard him tell me, I love you. It makes such a difference. You know, kids, kids grow up with such unique perspectives and this openness within their minds and their hearts. And over time, life comes in and hands them what I just heard was a one-two punch. When a child goes through something like a broken family, parents divorcing, losing a parent, whether it's to divorce, to moving, to parents breaking up, or losing a parent from this life, there is a piece that that ends up feeling removed. This piece of this person is here and now they're not am I still loved do they still love me does does this structure this archetype in my life love me sometimes we say the words I love you and we don't realize that the most powerful force in the world is love And it's not, I don't get the essence of like, it's just, you know, something that you just toss around me mindlessly. I get this essence that you don't necessarily see how much it makes the soul of, of your stepchild or stepchildren truly soar, truly sing as though they know no matter what, if they go out into a bitter and a cold and a harsh world, that they have love. They have the, the protection of the love of a parent. Even if that parent did not contribute to their creation, they still contributed. You're still contributing to their life. And you tell a child that you're raising, your stepchild or your stepchildren, that you love them. And they gain a protective, like a a protective bubble is what I'm seeing. In which there's this essence of always knowing on a soul deep level that they are loved. And so no matter how many pitfalls or hardships or heartbreaks they may go through as they grow up and go on their own journey in life and go on their own soul journey in life. The constant that is with them is the love that you have shared with them. And that is a beautiful gift and powerful blessing. So those words that you say, they carry the weight of healing, the weight of protection And you do it so freely. It's almost like an afterthought because it's so natural, because it's the truth. And that's how truths should be. They should just flow out because it's it's so natural that it's an afterthought. It it, it's just the truth. It just is what it what it is. It it's what comes out. And for you to say, I love you in that way, it doesn't diminish the power of the words. In fact, it actually amplifies the power because 
It is an inherent truth within your own heart and soul. And you have now helped your stepchildren to understand that that is also an inherent truth within their own hearts and souls. And spirit really, really wants to acknowledge how powerful it is when you stepped into this role, when you opened your heart, when you allowed for that love in, what impact it has energetically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically on your stepchild or stepchildren. It's in important it's impressive it's powerful it's a it's a divine protection from your heart from your soul so that they know no matter what they're always loved and that is a truth that becomes pervasive in their life that strengthens them through anything and everything they may go through so let's take a look at the energy that you bring as a step parent. We have the elk, the unicorn, I love that, and the card 12 and the king. Okay, with this king card, I do get a lot of um, divine masculine energy, but I also get a lot of stepfather energy. And I get that same thing with the elk here. I'm just letting the messages kind of flow in with this. With the elk, what I heard automatically was eclipsing out, eclipsing out. You know, you've got this eclipse up here. It's like this eclipsing out of of pain, eclipsing out pain, eclipsing out struggle, eclipsing out trauma through offering your hand, through offering the love that you have to give. It's it's like a, this, this king card, I'm seeing this hand and this right here is the love that you have. And this pearl here is, it's what you're showing them they contain within themselves the children you show them the beauty of their own heart and soul through offering something that is so easily given its love with the unicorn the unicorn correlates to the third eye so this is this is taking on a whole nother level too, because there's such a grounded energy here of just reality, like real life, like things that you go through, things that everybody goes through. And this way of moving through it, it's like you've given them this strength, this resolve, this resilience to be able to be their truest self, to open up to psychic gifts. You may have a psychic connection to your child or, or your stepchild or stepchildren um, that is very, very grounded. It's, it's like you always know exactly what they need to hear and exactly how they need to hear it and when they need to hear it. And you just gift that easily. Again, I keep getting this afterthought, afterthought, afterthought message. Like all of the things that you do, you it's, it's like, yeah, okay, I do it, but it's no big deal. It is a big deal. It really is a big deal. It's three small words, and it makes a world of difference. It changes a life. It is a big deal. And I really wish that you would not downplay that, because it is a big deal. And I'm speaking of, out of personal experience, someone that doesn't didn't get to experience this energy, this love, this knowing. At 33, I had to call my mom and ask her if she ever really wanted me because it was something that I had always felt as a child. We had had many arguments about my relationship with, with her husband, with my stepfather, because I just wanted a father. I wanted him to love me. I wanted 
to know that I had him in my corner. And you're doing this automatically, easily, in in a beautiful flow, like it just is. And it is a beautiful thing. And it does matter. And it is a big deal. And I know that me telling you this isn't going to change much. It doesn't have to. Because you need to hear it. Or it's time for you to realize that what what you do is is to such a magnitude that, that the divine sees it, that the divine acknowledges it that you are seen for this. You may downplay yourself. You may think that you have to do more. You have to work harder. You have to be better. But you love, and that love is so important. So in those moments where you feel like, I'm not doing enough, remember that the love that you share with a child, the love you share with your stepchild, is such a beautiful thing. And that means that every time that you think I should be doing better, what you're doing is learning to love yourself even more. And when you do that, it strengthens that protective bubble that you have gifted to your stepchild. Let's take a look at what the Akashic Records say about your um, soul as far as this role as a step-parent. We have the Six of Scrolls with the Sands of Time, the Five of Roses with the Garden, and the King of Roses. You know what I'm caught on? The fact that they're all facing the King of Roses. And again, we have the King and the King of Roses, and this, this Divine Masculine energy is very strong here. If you are a, a step parent that didn't have your own children, biologically speaking, it's not that you ran out of time. It's not that it was never the right time. It's, it's that there was a, a different path your soul wanted to take, a different lesson, a different journey, a different awareness that your soul wanted to take. It, it needed to be in this place. And I said stepfather, but I am getting um, a feminine energy that embodies the divine masculine very well. So it, this may be, I'm actually picking up a direct energy that I do, I am very familiar with. Um, so you may, you may have stepped in as a stepmother and the your partner and I don't get the sense that you're with them anymore your partner had children um that separation between you two in whatever way it doesn't change the fact that you love your stepchildren you're going to love them no matter what and that's a beautiful thing too and I want I want to tell you why that is such a fun thing this whole reading, all the piles, Spirit has really been calling me to talk about my own experiences in this area because it, it has had such a profound impact on my life, but also the lives of my children. My oldest daughter, Haley, was 11, just about just prior to turning 12, when I got divorced from my first husband, who was not her biological father. He and I had split up when she was just a baby. But he, my first husband raised her from the age of three until she was 11. I, I mean, eight years, it's a long time. When our marriage fell apart, he got into a relationship, got engaged, got remarried right away. But he still said that he wanted to see her because he had raised her for eight years. And we tried for a while. And then his new 
wife or fiance at the time wouldn't accept her. And so he willingly threw her away. And and I'm using kind of harsh words here, but it was a weekend where all the kids ended up sick and they brought just her back because they couldn't handle her and the other two. And it was this clear-cut separation. And she had to endure that from someone who used to say I love you to her all the time. And that compounded on the fact that she had already had a biological father who did the exact same thing prior. And this was a pattern for her, as well as for myself, that we were working on breaking and that we have broken. And it left a wound. It left, it left a pain within her of not knowing whether she was lovable from a father figure from a divine masculine figure until my husband came in and he actually adopted her two and a half years ago. She was 16 and he, he adopted her because he loved her, because he stepped into that role and he loved her. And no matter what, whether, whether anything were to happen in our marriage, I know without a doubt in my mind that that father daughter relationship would be there no matter what, that she has that same protective bubble, that bubble that I never got, of knowing that she has that love from that parent. Sometimes our souls choose a journey that doesn't look like what society says it's going to look like, but we choose this journey because the impact that it has, not just on ourselves, but on others and especially on children heals their inner children. It it maintains that that innocence that can get forgotten. It's never lost. It's just forgotten. It gets buried away because fear and pain and blame and shame and guilt and trauma buries itself on top over and over and over and over again. But you have given these children or this child, and and I do feel for a lot of you, it is literally a boy and a girl. You've given these children or this child something that they didn't have, something that or they had and was lost, was lost to what happens as the sands of time go and flow through our lives. You gave something back to them that elevated their souls, that elevated their hearts, that elevated their minds so that they can heal. You gave them the gift of your love. And it is powerful. And it is true heart protection. I think we can forget as we go on this journey, as we do these things, we can forget what it's like to love. And the power that is the love that we have. Or you can just think it's not a big deal. But either way, spirit and your guides are saying it is a big deal. And you reignited this. For some of you, you gifted it for the first time ever to these children. And it doesn't matter how much time or distance are between you. That love is there. Can we get closing messages? That wanted to come out. Yeah, that two of swords energy that I won't, I can't see this or I refuse to see it. And that's, that's that whole, it, it's not a big deal thing. And it's literally spirit being like, you can, you can keep taking this stance, but it doesn't, whether you take the stance or not, it doesn't change the fact that the decisions that you've made do matter. You've got the high priestess. That's two, 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 and then 20 reduces to a two. So this is really about harmonizing with, with your children. It, it's about giving them this awareness of what love is like, what, what give and take is like, what equality is like, what true genuine I love you and I love you too really means 
Okay. We've got the death card. Mirror, I get another one of those. Yeah, piles it feels like. There's another one. And the strength card. And then on the back of the deck, we have the queen of wands. And that explains a lot because that's where I was picking up that energy of a feminine taking on divine masculine energy. But see, we have we have a lot of twos on the board and twos are that that union of energies, that union of divine masculine and divine feminine energies that bringing them together. You have a lot of major arcana cards on here. You know, you've got the high priestess, the death, the strength card. You're literally teaching them spiritual lessons, important spiritual lessons, intuitive spiritual lessons and and how to to really see themselves for the truth. You've got two psychic cards again with this connection. With the death card, it doesn't all it, it's not always about physical death, even though I have picked that up in quite a few of the piles and I am getting that a little bit here as well. But it's about a rebirth. It's about a renewal. It's about shifting from one state of being to another state of being. It's it's this essence of showing them that no matter what they do in life, they're loved. And on a psychic and a spiritual level, that they can be whoever they want to be. If they want to, if they're psychic, that you will love them as they are, that you won't doubt them. And that gives them this opportunity to constantly go through this death and reverse cycle, this constant. I have to change and transform. You're giving them the love and the protection that they need to get through that, to trust their own intuition, to trust their own path and the strength within themselves to harmonize all of these energies because you've shown them that love exists and when love exists, then you can harmonize energies. There's a lot of, excuse me, there's a lot of energy flowing. <laughs> But there's a lot of energy here that speaks to the harmonization of divine masculine and divine feminine energy of just this natural flow of it with them. And it's like you you give them this protection to be whoever they want to be, to, to embrace every aspect of who they are because you have done that for yourself. And it's a powerful, powerful protection that you're giving these kids. It really is. And what I'm hearing to tell you is it doesn't matter how long or short of a duration of time you are in their lives. When you were in their lives, when you are in their lives, this is what the gift is. This is what you have done for them. And because you've done them, that this for them, you have also done this for yourself and spirit wants you to know that it is seen and it is appreciated and it is blessed and it does garner blessings for you. No matter how things go moving forward from here, know that who you are and the love that you give as a step parent or the love you gave as a step parent had a profound impact that will reverberate continually. Okay, pile three, four. I apologize. Maybe some of you guys have messages in pile three, but pile four, this is all I'm seeing and hearing for you guys. I do want to say thank you so much because I know, I know how powerful those words are. And I know what it's like to grow up without them. So thank you for gifting that to children. Thank you. Thank you to your guides and my guides. Thank you to spirit. Thank you for the connection and the messages, for this energy and for this awareness. I'm always so appreciative of this role that I get to play, this channeling that I get to do, and all the people that I get to interact with and the energies and messages I get to bring forth. It is such a blessing. If this video resonated, please hit that like button, share it out. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Down in the comment section below, let me know how you're doing. I have this feeling that I just want to hug you guys. And I get that off and on throughout my channel, but I do genuinely. Just, 
I do genuinely care. All right, you guys, thank you again so much for being here. Um, you can check out all my links in the description box below, links to my author page and to donating to the channel if you feel so inclined. I will leave you at that and I will see you at my next reading. I love you all. Bye.